In one of my previous videos, I have demonstrated how to teach math online using Wacom into a tablet and Microsoft whiteboard. And if you haven't got a chance to watch that video, I will put a link at the end of this video. But because Microsoft whiteboard is an application with tons of features and I could not explain all of those features in my first video. Therefore, I'm going to show you some more features of Microsoft Whiteboard in this video. And by watching these two videos, you will learn almost every feature available in Microsoft Whiteboard, which will enable you to teach mathematics online in an effective manner. Microsoft Whiteboard is a free online board. You need Microsoft Hotmail account. And once you have downloaded and installed Microsoft Whiteboard, you simply start typing Microsoft in the search bar of Windows 10 and you will see the icon of Microsoft Whiteboard app. Just click on that and the application will be started. I have already created one whiteboard and by clicking on this button, I can create a new whiteboard. And what I'm going to do in this video is I will start from scratch. So therefore I click on these three dots and I delete this whiteboard. It will ask me for a confirmation and I click delete. And now I create my new whiteboard by clicking on this icon and a new whiteboard has been created now. And in my previous video, I have shown you all these features which are available here, but some of the features which I could not explain in my first video, they are in this area. Now, first let me start from the beginning. And because I'm using Wacom into a tablet, so the first thing I would like to do is click on these three lines and turn on this active pen. So when you are using any tablet or touchpad, you should turn this on. And now you will get these pencils and some other icons here. And now in this video, I will be using this pen and this vacuum into a tablet. So I can take this black pen. I can set the thickness of the pen and then I can start writing like that. And the first feature which I would like to show you in this video is this ruler feature. And when I click on ruler, I get a ruler where I can draw straight lines by placing my pen near the ruler and then I can draw along the ruler. You can also notice that there is a rotation angle of this ruler also available and you can rotate this. And if you are using a tablet, so what you do is you first bring your arrow inside the ruler, then you gently touch the tablet and bring your two fingers closer or apart. So as you can see that when I bring my fingers apart from each other, the ruler is rotating rightward. And when I bring my fingers closer, the ruler is turning leftward. So this is how you turn if you are using a tablet. Now, if you are using a mouse, then you click on these three dots, turn this active pen off. And now I'm using the mouse and now I switch to inking mode by clicking on this icon. Then I will get these options available. Now I click on the ruler and now I put my arrow by using my mouse closer to the ruler and I can draw a straight line. And now if I put my arrow outside the ruler, I can zoom. And if I put my arrow inside the ruler and turn the wheel of my mouse, then the ruler will rotate. So you rotate the ruler by using the wheel of your mouse. And now if I click on this done inking, I will again go back to this menu and the next feature I would like to show is a search feature. If I click on image menu, I have three options. I can get an image of my camera. I can get Bing image, which is the Microsoft search engine. So if I click on that and let's say I search for an image from NASA and now it will show me some images and I have selected this creative commons only. And then it also shows me at the bottom that these results are tagged with Creative Commons license. This license also has some types, so you can further verify on creativecommons.org uh, which license these images have. But let's say I want to put this image, so I double click on that and the image will be inserted. And now this image is an object which I can move anywhere on my infinite canvas provided by Microsoft Whiteboard. And if you want to delete, you can simply click on delete and the image will be deleted. Now in the same image menu, the third option is library image. And what does it mean is that it will open a dialog box and you can upload an image from your computer if you want. And then there are a few very important options in this insert menu. If I click on that, I have some of the most important options. And I will be explaining these four options. And then I will explain a very important point about printing your whiteboard when you are using a PowerPoint document 
because sometimes what happens is when you want to save your whiteboard you lose all your writing and I will show you how you can preserve that. So the first option here is a note grid. So if I click on that, it will insert a note grid. And if I zoom this, I can zoom by using my mouse wheel. Now I can see that there is a grid which has one row, three columns. And if I click on any of the note and then I click on edit, I can type anything here. I can also add a note and it will start the second row. And if I click again, it will keep adding sticky notes into my whiteboard. So when you are teaching mathematics, sometimes you want to demonstrate something in different areas and you can do that. And once you have explained something or you have written something, you can even move these notes from one area to another of your whiteboard. So you simply click and drag and move it to anywhere you want. So let me delete these two. And now if I click on this, insert menu again the next option is list preview and now I would move this canvas to a new position so that I could show you this list and now I zoom into this area and as you can see that it is a list and you can edit it like normal and now for example this is my task one and when I write down my task one it shows me the next option then I click on that and I can write my second task whatever I want and myself and my other collaborators on this whiteboard they have the ability to like this as well so if I click on this it will be liked and now if you want to remove your like you click in this area not on that one and then you simply click on this unlike again so in this way you can have a list in your whiteboard and now let's delete this list for the time being and the next feature in insert menu is follow up list and this is similar to the list except here you are assigning certain tasks to someone and in order to use this feature there must be few other team members and you can add your team members by clicking on invite button so if you click on invite someone now you can create a link to this whiteboard by clicking this link on and it will create a link you copy this link it will show you link copied you send this to your team members in the email when they will join then they will be part of this whiteboard and then what you can do is you can assign a certain task so you just type your task here then you click on assign button and now you will see your team members in this area and you can click on that and your task will be assigned to your team member because if you are the only one creating this whiteboard then there is no point using this feature but this is available and very helpful now click on this insert menu again and now I will show you some of the templates so if I click on this template I have a brainstorming template and a Kanban uh, this is a Japanese concept uh, which was used by a Japanese engineer for productivity and I have a separate video on this which you can watch on my channel I will put a link in this place and let me show you how it works if you click on this you will get a grid something like this and in this grid what basically you are getting is that you are getting some visual representation of the tasks on the left hand side these are the problematic tasks which you could not complete in time or your team members could not complete in time then there are certain tasks in progress and then there are certain tasks which have been completed so it gives you a visual presentation of the tasks so it is easy to understand which task is holding you back so that you can assign extra resources to complete that task so by using microsoft whiteboard you have the ability to manage a small project this is not a full featured project management tool such as Trello uh, which I have many videos on my channel you can watch but still this is a very useful feature to have in a whiteboard application and Microsoft whiteboard has this you can also insert a PowerPoint document Word document or a PDF document inside Microsoft whiteboard so let me show you so if I click on this PowerPoint document on my desktop I have this document I click on that I open it and it will open the slides of my document this document has only one slide I can click on that and then I can click on insert selected if I have more slides I can insert all slides or I can select and I can click on insert selected now this slide is just like an object in my Microsoft whiteboard 
So if you are teaching mathematics online and you already have made some PowerPoint presentation, you can insert your slides inside the whiteboard and then you can explain the concepts from your PowerPoint slides and then you can explain by using some extra features of Microsoft whiteboard outside your slide. And you can do this in a similar manner by using the Word document. But if you are using a Wacom tablet, you don't have to bring your PowerPoint document inside the Microsoft whiteboard. So if you are sharing a whiteboard, then probably this option is better. But if you are taking a simple online lecture which where you are sharing your screen, then you can use PowerPoint document in its own application because you are just sharing the screen. So let me open a blank PowerPoint document. Now this is a document, I just delete this thing and let me delete this as well. And now by using my Wacom pen, I can write here anything I want. It will give me certain options inside the PowerPoint. I can also select from here. As you can see, I can highlight this and this is fantastic. But when you want to save this as a PDF for your students for their future reference, if you are teaching mathematics online, uh, you might need PowerPoint to demonstrate something. You might already have some lectures made in PowerPoint presentations where you want to demonstrate some extra things. And now you are writing some extra information and you want your students to be able to access this later on and you want to save your PowerPoint document in the form of a PDF, then make sure that you don't straight away save as. Because one of my subscribers, uh, she got this problem and she brought it to my attention that I should explain this as well, that when you want to keep your annotations in a PowerPoint document, what you do is you click on file and then you click on print. Then in the printer area, you select Microsoft print to PDF and then you click on print. And now I can give it a name and it will save as a PDF on my desktop. If I save this and now I open this PDF and as you can see that my annotations are there. Because if you simply save this as a PDF file, you may lose your writing, whatever you have written in your PowerPoint document. So this is it about this video. Uh, these were some of the missing features uh, from the previous video. I hope you like this. If so, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and see you next time.